Hi, welcome to the very first status for the year 2023. In this video, we're going to cover the status and our path forward. Lots of interesting things to talk about. First off, to those people that are only on my Distinti uh, YouTube site, the Transvariant video playlist is now available on the Ethereal Mechanics YouTube site. The playlist link is in the low bar. The last video for the transvariants will be released next weekend on the 8th. And in that video, we're going to discuss how to write software for the simulation tool, which will also be made available. Uh, the source code will be made available to Patreon engineer and above, and the uh, application executable will be made available to first class passengers and above. Also, if you recall from our video on uh, T22B, our trailer video, we discussed that we are not going to break nature's engine, the atom, like regular scientists are doing to release energy. We are going to load the atom down. And of course, this is figurative. It shows a generator hooked up to the atom. But we're going to show examples of where this does, in fact, occur. I found two examples where it does, in fact, occur and next week, not next weekend, but the weekend of the 14th, um, and, and it works just like I said. It's a whole bunch of little atoms working together to do a bit larger effect. Okay, and I found two examples in nature, and those examples I'm going to release to Patreon passengers and above in the video release on the 14th. Again, only to Patreon passenger above. It'll be released later to everybody else when we committed it to paper and copyright it or something else of that nature. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of preempt, more preemptive purchases. My J-O-B gave me a bonus this year, and I spent about half of it buying more parts for the Ethereum Mechanics Initiative, uh, mainly for the upcoming new electromagnetism V5 experiments and for one or two beyond that. Essentially, we're going to upgrade our technology this year. Okay, so the experiments we're going to have to run, these, the blue are kind of the experiments we're going to run for new electromagnetism V5. There's probably another one here that I missed. And also, I'm already starting to consider the experiments for the cosmology series. We have our galactic simulator. These over here represent the little printed circuit boards we're going to have to make, or not necessarily a printed circuit board. They might just be an add-on board to a, a daughter board to like an Arduino or something of that nature. Okay, these little experiments here mean we're going to have a little tiny printed circuit board made for these. Okay, I'm not going to discuss all of these now. Um, you can re pause and read this on your own. Uh, I'm going to discuss some of these or the context of some of these going forward to show you what I've had to do to get ready for all of these experiments coming up. Okay, the simplest one, the first one we're going to push out the door because it's the easiest one to do. Well, it's the easiest one to do as far as not having to make a printed circuit board. We're just going to have a little printed circuit board. Uh, there's going to be one transistor, half a dozen capacitors, half a dozen resistors, connectors, and a little wall wart. And the majority of this project is going to be C-sharp software, which is going to use an oscilloscope and a uh, arbitrary function generator to make very precise inductance measurements. Measurements that, if this works right, will blow away anything anybody's ever done with regard to measuring inductance. Okay, and that'll be the hopefully the first thing we get out the door. And, you know, anyway. Uh, the next one is we're going to do high precision frequency counter. Now, basically what this is going to be is, it may not even be a printed circuit board. I have purchased a very high precision uh, 10 megahertz source. This is what's known as an oven-controlled crystal oscillator. And this is rated at a half a part per billion. A half a part per billion. Okay, and what I and also what we're going to do on this little board here, we're going to put that source on this board. We're also going to put a 12-bit ripple counter like we did in the experiments that we that I showed you for the crystal, which hasn't been released to everybody yet. Only the Patreon members have seen that right now. Uh, the reason for that is our key site frequency, this multimeter can only do frequency counts up to about 800 kilohertz. And we want to make measurements far above that. So by using a 12-bit ripple counter, 
Okay, we can downsample this to the point where we can make precise frequency measurements. But in order to check this out, we want to be able to take this high precision source, connect it into the input to double check that the meter and everything works so we can have trust in the measurement that this instrument is given us. So if these two agree with each other, that's a good sign. Now, in the future, we may improve this by putting a microprocessor on here and doing something in that nature. But, you know, I'm trying to keep this, these things as quick as possible because time is of the essence. Okay, there's going to be another print circuit board that we're definitely going to have to make. I've got all of these uh, crystal frequency controlled frequency synthesizers that are crystal controlled. I got the crystals, and sometimes the crystal frequencies are not quite the frequencies we need for a particular experiment. So, for example, these guys here can take a 10 megahertz crystal using a phase lock loop, synthesize much higher frequencies. Also, I want to be able to lock down the how the Atmega 328 and the SAM 3E, how their crystal oscillators work, so I can make sure that when we, if we're going to make a printed circuit board of those, that they, we, we can get the exact amount of capacitance needed to get them within the precision we're looking for. And again, we're going to use the previous project to verify all this stuff. I have the SAM 7 here because I'm looking at that we may have to go above the SAM 3 to get some of our projects done. Okay, I also am developing a noise destroyer. I'm trying to do this with a, well, I'm not going to, I've got the blue ears covering what information I have. I don't want to release it yet. But if this works out right, <clears throat> excuse me, if this works out right, we're going to see a 33 dB improvement in signal to noise. Basically, that's a 2,000 times improvement in noise performance that should push the noise into the nanovolt range. Again, like I said before, we want to be able to see as far as we can see down the rabbit hole to see if there's any nonlinearities, because that's where all the fun is going to be. Okay, also, um, I did some really good work. I have some good UNO code gives us a very precise 12 turns per second stepper motor that can ramp up, ramp down, and do uh, vibrations and other really cool things. Okay, but it's using a, uh, it's not using micro-stepping, so it has more vibration than we need, and that is coupling into our measurements. And the, the 328P can pretty much only barely do one channel at a time. So, and I want a dual stepper, so we can have two axes going at the same time. And I want to promote that either to a SAM 3, which is a Arduino do, or to a SAM 7. By doing a higher frequency, we can use um, higher precision micro-stepping, which hopefully should reduce vibration. Okay, but the experiment that's really getting on my nerves, because I'm trying to make, I'm trying to select stuff that I can use for everything. Here's the Arduino do. And for the Galactic simulator, what we're going to have is we're going to have a big bucket of water. This is about a, a, a yard across with a pump in the middle creating a vortex. And I want the pump to be speed controlled by a microprocessor at the same time the microprocessor is taking pictures from above. And we're going to do on the top of the water, we're going to put little stars and planets or maybe use um, glitter or something so we can see the vortex action of the water and use the camera that's looking down from above to measure the relative speed of the vortex. And then this guy is going to do motion control of the motor based on what it sees. But what we're the biggest problem I'm having is the this processor here, the SAM3, okay, does not have a camera port. And trying to get a camera image off is problematic. Uh, worse, this guy doesn't have enough memory on board to store uh, a single image, let alone we need at least have two images in memory to do the processing. We can extend this with memory, okay, but that's problematic because the Arduino, this package, oh, does not pull out all of the address bits for have enough memory. There's a lot of other issues, okay. So uh, running into limits with the SAM3, the Arduino do. Okay, the other problem I'm running into is you know, I was trying to keep in the Arduino development environment because it's free, everybody can get it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but I'm running into the fact that this is primitive. This is how we did code back in the 80s. 
Okay, the, these processors today, they have JTAG ports where you can do some fantastic in-circuit development. In-circuit, you can, uh, you know, you can look at the pins from the outside and you can, you know, you don't actually, like for Arduino, if you want to check a pin, you got to write a code to exercise your pin and hope you wrote it right. If your pin's not working, you don't know if you wrote the code right or if your code's even running. With the in-circuit debugger, you can go in and say, hey, turn that pin on and off. Okay, and that's going to save us a lot of time. It also allows us to trace through the code, to step through the code, and to program it all from the JTAG interface. Okay, and also the this interface here is not really good for large projects. Forgetting the debugging and forgetting the in-circuit emulation, the biggest problem here is this is a very primitive code interface, and trying to uh, organize large projects is getting to be a pain in the neck as far as include libraries, the whole nine yards. So this is very primitive tool. It's fine if your kid making a little project to make LEDs blink, this is perfect. Okay, but we're looking at getting into higher end processing of our projects and this is just going to be a drag. Okay, and I do want to stay with the, with the SAM, uh, the, the, the Atmel um, AVR or SAM Devices are great. I love the architecture. Arduino did a good job by picking these. Uh, and I've used them in the Arduino and to set up, you know, the timers and the UARTs and all that stuff. It's very simple and straightforward. And the code compilation is very clean and efficient. So um, I want to stay with that for that reason. Also because I have familiarity. Also we can reuse our Arduino code that I've already written. Or we can use other people's Arduino code for other devices out there. Okay, it should port well into the, you know, we may have to add some includes or whatever, whatever. Okay, but we can use Arduino code. Um, and the Atmel in-circuit emulator is inexpensive. Okay, so Microchip purchased all the Atmel stuff, and they're still offering the Atmel in-circuit emulator debugger. I stands for in-circuit emulator. Okay, and they're only charging 180 bucks for that. Now, it's it's not as good, possibly, as the the microchip uh, high-end model, which is 10 times more expensive. Okay, but you know what? Um, I, I, I'm sitting there saying to myself, you know, I'm going to give this a try for 180 bucks. If it doesn't make things faster, then we'll give this guy a try. Okay, right now, I'm, I'm, speed is of the essence. We need to get these projects done fast. I'm not worried any. I'm not worried as much anymore about trying to stay simple so other people can follow along. We need to get to the promised land fast, okay? And the the MP Lab uh, compiler suite that goes along with this, I can use either the Atmel Studio or I can use the MP Lab Studio with this as well. So I've got two choices, and those studios are both free, from what I understand. So all I have to purchase is the Instructed Emulator, and I'm off to the races. So if this one doesn't work then I can use this one and I'll still be using the same tools. Okay, so now that gives me a lot of options and I'm using professional tools rather than the, you know, the high school grade tools that Arduino gives out. And I know I'm not complaining. Well, what Arduino did is fantastic. A lot of people that would have never gotten into programming computers, they just opened doors. So I'm not complaining. It's just I'm at the level now where I need to play chess, not checkers. Uh, that's a bad example. I just saw the show, The Queen's Gambit, on Netflix. Really good. You should check it out. Um, so I went looking in. I started. I saw. I, I picked up. I said to, uh, you know, I wanted to select a processor on the SAM. So I told the DigiKey thing to select me a SAM device. And I went through all the things. And these are the four devices that came up that were within the specification I want. Okay, and an interesting thingly enough is these are not the highest end. The highest end would be all the same numbers except 21 here. These are all 19s. The 19 means it's only got a half a megabyte of flash. Okay, I really wanted the, the 21 which has two megabytes of flash because then it gives, I have plenty of room to do anything I need. But a lot of times that extra flash is really only if you're going to have an LCD graphical output uh, usually what that flash gets eaten up with is little is getting its fonts and bitmaps and things you put into your LCD output. I'm not really planning on an LCD output. Uh, could happen, but I'm pretty sure I can make it work with half a megabyte of flash. And these are really all that's left. That's all that's in stock right now. 
Um, so it means that things are really drying up. This is all that's really left for the, the SAM7. But before I go into the expense of trying to make a printed circuit board, I'm like, let me see if they have already built, you know, evaluation boards that we can use instead of me having to go. Because if I don't have to make a printed circuit board, I don't want to make one. And I went and looked, and the SAM7s have nothing, 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 nada. Everything is obsolete. I'm like, how could it be obsolete? So anyway, and the lead times are like in, invalid because they're not making them anymore. So there is no lead times on these, or at least the ones I checked. And then so I was like, okay, it looks like we're going to have to make a printed circuit board. And so what I did was I ordered 50 of these and four of these. This is a 144 uh, quad flat pack that brings all the pins out. This gives me the full options of what we're going to do. These are the smaller device, only 64 pins. These are throwaways. I've only bought four of these so I could burn them up learning how to use the, the in-circuit emulator, yada, 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 uh, without having to waste, you know, and because a smaller number of pins, easier to solder onto a, you know, kludgy board or something like that. I don't have to necessarily make, you know, a, a professional printed circuit board. I can just, there's a lot of other techniques to use this in a temporary fashion in such a manner that I'm going to throw it away anyway. Just to, just to get familiar with all the tools without ruining the, the ones we really want to use. Okay. And then I started researching into the device and, and getting ready to start figuring out what, you know, how and what and who. And in doing so, I ran across this picture again. And this little area I have blown up over here. And then I noticed, wait a minute, SAM 7 is legacy 32 bit? I know the SAM 3 is legacy because that's the Arduino Do. That's been around for nearly 10 years now. So, of course, that's legacy. But I'm like, the SAM 7 shouldn't be legacy. It had really good performance characteristics that are very modern. And then I was looking up and I'm like, oh. I got mixed up. I'm not looking for the SAM 7. I'm looking for the SAM E70. Okay, that was that's where I got confused. So I just per I purchased these. Okay, but when I went looking for the already built development board, I went looking for these by out of mistake. So then these have already been purchased. That's okay. <laughs> we'll put them to use. Um, but I still, if I don't have to make a print circuit board right now, I don't want to make one right now. So I went back on the DigiKey and like. All of the ones that using the E70, V71 is close enough to the E70. It's like, oh, they don't have any. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm still going to have to make a print store. But then I clicked on the lead time for this guy because this guy that fits my needs the best. And the lead time says it's only 20 days out. So I'm like, okay, I purchased two of these. And what's nice about these is they, they have the camera port that we need for the for the galactic they've got an ethernet port so i can pull the data off to a you know a desktop for processing really fast um and they have a really nice at uh, mega they've got the footprint of the connections for the mega shield and i'm like that is very nice because i have a lot of mega shields in stock and to make a daughter board for this will be really easy so we're going to do all of our experimentation based on this guy and then maybe later on in the future, when we get past the experiments, um, we'll put everything together on one printed circuit board um, using the, the 50 chips that I got. And we'll see how that goes. Um, either way, I'm going to put those 50 chips to use one way or the other. So this is the last slide. I want to wish everybody a happy new year.